Very good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm super nervous. I'm super nervous. This is the. This is the first podcast. So I have. I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's a very good idea. Excellent idea. I hope so. I hope so. Are you? Are you all settled in? You ready? Ready to go? I'm ready. Yes, cool. I'm ready to go. All right, let's start. Let's start. So, so I want to um, first. I just want to go back memory lane because it's been like so long since we had a chance to talk. So, you and I were both postdocs in Laszlo's group uh, many, many years ago. It's a, it's unbelievable. I mean, we both look amazing still, of course. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I should try for humor uh, on my. I, I like it. I don't. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no um, problem at all. <laughs> uh, um, but um, but we both started in Lazo's group, and I remember that you were you were working on on the big kind of the big mobility paper. Um, you know that like uh, we, you interview in Notre Dame and then join us in Boston, or you happen to have the I interviewed the experience in Notre Dame. to live in. I was ready. I wanted to go so bad that I was ready to go to the Midwest and be in Notre Dame. So I got the job and then the group moved. But did you happen to rent and live in South Bend? No, no, no. Like, ah, they, that's they the part I forgot. I know we all were ready to go to live in the South Bend, but the, we lived experience in South Bend. You know, I interviewed in Boston and then I moved to, <laughs> to South Bend. Yes. Coming but, from Germany was quite different. Yeah, because you came from Germany. Because I like right. later on, I wrote a paper, and the referee said, "I want you to do something with uh, geometric random graphs." And I was ah, like, "What the hell is yes. that?" And I looked at the papers, and I'm like, "What? That's Marta, right?" So somehow, yes. the, how that did you start was my out? So what, exactly. How did, how did you get started on science? That's the the beginning of uh, memory line. Well, let me. This is a moment I, I need to, to mention that all my advisors were advisees of Gene Stanley. He, oh, as yeah. I've been following the path of a, a statistical physics of complex system in the slow mo Hablin and Gene School. Then uh, in Venezuela, I was doing oil research after my undergrad in physics. I am a mom. Then I had a kid uh, yeah. early on before uh, graduating from the undergrad. Then. I had to work in physics in a paying uh, job, you know, defining yeah. what my future was going to be. And that was uh, Flow in Polish Media in Caracas in the Institute of uh, Research. My advisor was Jim's uh, advisee, PhD student. And immediately, very soon, I, I realized I wanted to study other things beyond oil. I was in love with fractals and percolation. And it was a moment in the library that I decided I need to go to where this book was written, to work with the author of this book. That was uh, Stauffer, Dietrich Stauffer. But you know, yeah. it was the idea of going and traveling and learning with uh, the people that write the book. That was my, <laughs> because it was so fun and so inspiring. Um, then Mariela Araujo uh, recommended me. She knew, you know, Jim's alumni are everywhere and I wanted to go to Europe. Right. Then she recommended Hans Hermann. Just wrote an email, Hans sent me a letter of uh, acceptance and I, to, uh, because I was applying to my scholarship then, thanks to DEADE, yes. the Change uh, Agency uh, for Students German uh, Agency, uh, I got my scholarship. They chose four Venezuelans. I'm lucky. I was one of the four. We are lucky, I, Marta. Oh. I went to Stuttgart with my husband and four year old at the time because yeah. I did my master's and then went. Yes. And then, and then you. And then mobile agents, mobile agents. Uh, okay. Then Hans gave me something related with the soil deposition. I didn't want to work on that. And then I start, it was a moment to start working in networks. Then uh, a porous media is somehow a network when you put it more complex. And I started working in opinion dynamics in network. Mm -hmm. And the hottest thing was going to work in mobile. Yes. Agent, yes. contact yes. network of mobile agents. So I did many uh, papers uh, with an agent that you would create the low, the lows for collision. It was not momentum conservation. And depending on the collisions, very interesting uh, yeah, yeah. network topologies emerged. 
I was kind of forced to look at it, and it's a surprisingly <laughs> good model of. Um, yes, right. Uh, it was of, lucky. Of there metals. is the lock factor. It's few. The shortest path in the gas uh, determine the number of collisions, and the number of collisions is a degree. Then how do yes. you do a a complex network? The more collisions you have, the faster you move. That was very yeah. fun. But the, it's naive. But the impressive part is how good it represented the school network. Eighty-two of them, right? It's it's ridiculous. Like w w so, when <laughs> I had to look at it for the, the paper we did on real groups in the you know, like I collected this big data set, um, and and we had a paper on communities, and someone was like, "You should compare to this model." Ridiculous. Say and it, I was say like, it, "Ridiculous it's model." <laughs> but I was I, first of all, I was like, oh, "I have to read up on this," and then I read about it, and I'm like, "This is ridiculous. This is not going to do <laughs> anything." <laughs> Then we started doing it and it worked for everything. Like, it, you know, I had to really work hard to realize where, where it got things wrong. And basically like you have to go, first of all, you know, like the communities are weirdly distributed and the size distributions are right, but they're weirdly shaped yeah, in space. That's one and, 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 and also like the same group of nodes would never meet again in this model. There's like some reasons, but it was kind of like, I was like, what? This is uh, surprisingly awesome. And then imagine at the it. beginning when we put the model in a publication without data to back it up. Of course, so I was and I was put in my shoes, Latin American student in Germany with a kid. Yeah. That yeah. the model was really hard to justify. There is a hidden variable that I started looking for data everywhere. And I found the Ad Health experiment with 82 schools, social networks, same conditions. Right. But okay, the fact that it worked. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. But it's a, it's a robust and then model. Referee, it was published because yes. it was. Those are the interesting things of science. It seems, uh, yeah. So, then, but but so, you went to, so you went to Stuttgart and then you're yeah. like, I got to get myself to South Bend. So, so I guess <laughs> right. it was Laszlo. I, I, here is a moment. It's very nice. But basically, I knew, you know, you get bit by the, the, the virus of research. I wanted to do research. Yeah. Uh, data driven because the previous experience and the magic that it entailed. And it was the words. We were going the whole group to launch uh, to the Mensa uh, in Stuttgart. And Hans told me, I would recommend you to go with, uh, to the US to work with Barabasi, Amaral, or Vespignani, these three. The yes. fact that my advisor told me that, that was the motivation I needed to write to them. And Amazing. then I wrote in a, in a January for Dynamic Day. So we were presented at work in Dynamic Days in January in Maryland. And I wrote to them. And then uh, Laszlo and Alex Pesmigiani were available uh, to receive me uh, in the days of my conference, after the conference. So I visited uh, South Bend and Bloomington, where Alex was. Yeah. And my topic was very much aligned into the data that Laszlo has that I didn't know he had at the time. And the data is mobile agents, but for real. Real, real mobile. <laughs> at a country mobile. scale. Yes. Then I start working. Yes, that's fantastic. But so now, so, so you, this podcast is called uh, Too Lazy to Read the Paper. But in a way, what I always also wanted was to do a podcast that was a kind of you know, like who is the scientist and why do you do science, right? And so, so now that I have you, I'm going to ask like a little bit more about that because I think that the reasons we are interested, like you, like being a scientist is kind of an insane career. Right? Like your chances of making it are small, and and you have to yeah. work super hard, and you're not paid all that well. And yeah. so you need some it's kind not of crazy, all the money. It's definitely exactly. Not. So you need some kind of crazy drive to become a scientist. But what I find is that it's so different for different people. And for oh. you, it's even more because you had a child, you had a family and you had to move them. Oh, I'm bon I hope that's <laughs> very okay. early. Yes. You had yes. to move them around the globe. So, so what, what, why, what's in you that made you want to be a scientist? Uh, the, well, I have to say that focusing in career and PhD was because I had a, a child, because I had all kind of other interests than uh, physics too, <laughs> among yeah. them. But then the one that was paying <laughs> was physics. 
yeah. and then that's why the PhD. That's one aspect, no? That I always say that Emiliano is a hidden variable of success. I have to be very pragmatic. Yes. Uh, like I, I don't remember if when I was with you guys, I could take lunch breaks, but uh, rarely I could take lunch break because I would go from early and then leave early to pick him up at school and bring him to the park. We visit yeah. the park every day. So. He's the hidden variable of success, I like to say, but of course, uh, I focus in, I stay in academia for way other reasons, is um, I think what uh, keeps me going and inspire me so much every time is the fact of discussing an idea, imagining yes. a result, you know, <laughs> hypothesis, and uh, going for it, and then when at the end of the day the result go somehow in the direction your, of your hypothesis but the actual result to look at the you know crystallized idea i always like it better somehow you know like it, it surprised me in good ways i'm not yes. talking about the referee pros <laughs> i'm talking about my story uh, that part, I think I, I, I can make the analogy to somehow to art, you know, it's like your piece, your masterpiece. That part I really enjoy. Yes. And um, I had to learn how to do that. And I learned very well and I enjoy to the second stage is how you do that when you are not the one uh, driving the, the, the art. So when you are advisor, <laughs> you pass the line and then you need to see every, the same process, but through someone, from somebody else, your advice is the code is to somebody else, the plot you need to direct, but it's, you, you're not playing the instrument of this yeah. art. But then still, um, I start enjoying uh, how the students grow, the researchers grow in the process. And somehow many, often also get to enjoy this. And those are the ones that stay in academia or many of them graduate and go to industry and they say, I hope I, I could do so. Uh, when I leave, I, I continue doing uh, this amount of fulfilling job, work, yes. so no, that 100%. they find the work fulfilling. That is amazing. The yes. students, no, the no, graduating I, students, yeah. But I, I mean, I agree so much. And I think this love of the process, I share that very much right and it's yeah. and it has many aspects as you say it really is that exactly it's about ideas and you have the best conversations that's that's like a thing that science in a way it's more fun to talk to scientists than anyone else even if they're you know the, because they pursue ideas all the way to the end so so that brings so, me back to the last loss lab remember i see this feeling as it's clearly chair right that excitement uh, for a uh, discovery and interesting idea and i remember that uh, i perceived that from you when we were in uh, in the office in boston uh, in northeastern yeah and then when you have uh, several uh, group members that have shared that it was such a good time right Yes, and I think in a way it's contagious, right? Like the reason I think you so. keep having students that enjoy science is because you can kind of learn it, like you can you can get it, but you need someone to show you because it is like a weird, crazy way of working, right? Because there's also a lot of hard work. Um, and it's important to tell explicitly that to the students. I need to say Pedro Lind, it was a postdoc in, in Hans uh, group, Hans's group. Um, and I was very stressed because I needed to succeed because my job and my son and etc. And then he said, Marta, you know that we are not here for the, you know, we need to enjoy this. This is not about, so otherwise, if not, we would have taken other jobs, right? Yes. We are doing yeah. this because it has to be joyful and click immediately because it's true. It was there, always was there, but I just needed to relax a, a little bit and then not I know it's a cliche, but not to forget to enjoy the process because it's there. Then he, he told me that, to, you know, that was probably after the first uh, paper rejection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it most likely was after that. And then I say, okay, that's true. I never forgot. Sometimes I, I remember that uh, to some students when they are too anxious. Yeah, no, no, but and I, it but works. I... 
but I think it's very important. It's important that it's the, you know, like if you want, if you're doing science because you want someone to tell you that you're amazing or whatever, it, you know, it's, that's, that's not a good, uh, <laughs> it's not a good no, monitor. that's a terrible. Thing. And, and we down. don't need so much of that, right? Because the ego, there are enough egos there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, maybe, no, that's maybe... not the, the goal. <laughs> All right, but anyway, this is amazing, and thank you for sharing. I think, I think also, hopefully, some young people will see this, and I think it somehow is interesting to understand, you know, like why people are doing this and how they got into it. I, if we had more time, I don't think we should go too deep, but I mean, in a way I want to do like a whole show where I ask about like, what were your, what did your parents do? And what did you do as a kid and all that stuff? Oh, but we'll, that's true. But we'll do that's that. True. We'll do that another. Engineer. My father was a mechanical engineer. Everybody in my family, <laughs> siblings. We are, we are five siblings, four honey engineers. Nice. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty. But I had total support. He said, whatever you do, you're going to succeed. He told me that when I told him I was going to do physics. That's, a, that's support. But he must also be insanely proud of you now, like what you've done. Yes. Yes. The beautiful thing is that they, they he always put this the same proud face, even when I show my first grade. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, wallet, the cards, the report card. He always put that the proud face that kept, that uh, motivated me. But I mean, but now I have kids and and you realize like they mean it, right? It's, it's like you, as a parent, True. you mean True. it. You are amazed <laughs> when they, you know, like uh, it, nice. it doesn't it's have to true. be so much in a way. All right, very cool. So now, so now you got to Bloomington, you're working with the, with the real mobile agents and all of a sudden, you know, basically this first paper that you did really started a kind of whole new offshoot of mobility research, right? So Dirk Brockman had done the work with a bunch of other people on the dollar bills, but your paper, I mean, I can't even, I can't even remember the title because I just call it like the, the mobility paper, right? But <laughs> it's understanding individual human, mobility. Uh, <laughs> understanding added. human mobility pattern. So, so that was a kind of huge undertaking taking that you started, right? It was a big paper. I remember Cesar talking about the curse of the phone data because he felt that it was never ending. <laughs> remember this? <laughs> it was too big. I, I thought he, he also referred to the curse of exponents. <laughs> yeah, the sure. religion of exponents. <laughs> the many curses. <laughs> but so you did that paper and that was, I mean, I remember that was in process for a long time, right? Like um, sure. while you were in the lab. But in, but in a way, that was kind of also the paper that set a direction for your career? Yes, yes. The mobile agents had a law. <laughs> and it was wonderful uh, that we, we talked to Dirk when we had it in the making because we made the paper in such a way that it's a follow-up of the things he could not measure by the fact that the dollar bill go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah then uh, that was a beautiful part. So instead of saying it the, the, the grumpy way, we made it the follow-up way. And I think that is one of the secrets. You build community in physics. Yes. And there to do things that people that had the data were not doing because the data was there, I discovered uh, in the research, at least in the research labs of mobile phone companies. In computer science, there were papers yeah, with mobile phone data that we were not aware of because they were not so many as today. Um, that's one aspect. So uh, still, and, and we were inspired. So we didn't try to complicate it much more. We just discovered what was uh, not there. That yes. is the return to, but to in locations a way, and, the, and the statistical fit. But in a kind of interesting way, if you think about it, because Dirk has also done so much work on flows later on they were with the dollar bills they were really observing things moving on the mobility network right they were observing kind of exactly. the flows exactly. before they had the underlying data set and so what you could do is you could actually look at what is the underlying data sets that generating these flows of dollar bills that you observe that gives rise to these uh, levy flights and so on yes 
Yes, and it's, um, it's beautiful the fact, as Laszlo Master said, um, we can say in this paper what he always referred to, that is a combination of, he, he likes to call it the combination of randomness and predictability. And in my way, I, I, I wanted to think is uh, like the heterogeneity. Yes. And the similarity. So I call it, uh, you know, in my mind is heterogeneity and the universality. Then the, the, the things I can tell you, for example, is the um, one thing that surprised me is just ranking the frequency of visits per location. You have some people that only visit five antennas and some people that visit uh, 50. And the rank is quite nice, the tail. So especially yeah. the first two, not necessarily, but the, the after the third on, it's a beautiful ranking process. Yes. Then yeah. that bring a sieve law that Lada Adamic was referring to the sieve law and the power law as a ranking process for networks. Then it suggests or bring the idea of preferential return. Yes. And that's how uh, it came later, not in our paper, it came later, the first model to, to reproduce this data was exploration with preferential return. And that ingredient stays yes. in the yeah. paper we, we are uh, heading today late, uh, in this podcast. Uh, this We're law- almost there. We're yeah, so close. This law uh, appears. Uh, and what basically, what this paper did that the dollar bill could not find is this uh, ranking of the visited locations due to prefer due to return we didn't call it preferential at the time but it was there another aspect and it's also interesting is that um they are results in a paper that you put it you like it and that was not so popular anymore nobody took it we place the i love that part it's favorite i think nobody used it much not even myself ever again. We start uh, getting the trajectories, finding the inertia, inertia tension, rotating them. We see a radius of gyration, averaging them. Yeah. I love it because I would use the inertia tensor uh, <laughs> definition from the classical uh, mechanics book. I use it <laughs> as a physicist. You want to use your physics tool more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I use this, and I like it very much, this uh, idea of uh, averaging and creating a function, PDF function of location. It's hard to grasp. It's hard to use even in practice. But it was so much fun to do yeah. it. No, no, absolutely. And I remember we discussed about that, of the rotation and et cetera, in the cafe in South Bend still, uh, yeah. with uh, Laszlo and Cesar. Yeah. And, and and then we did it and it was so beautiful. So it yeah, was, no, was no. a creation moment. All those figures were so nice to make. Notice that aspect I didn't use further. This, well, no, I used for a virus on a phones. Yes. When, when you don't have more information, you can use that function to complete the locations. But, and that brings us to more complex, the, the life is complex, time. So you can complete the locations probabilistically with that function, but when, when they occur. Yeah. And then if you want to do encounters, you want to know a little bit better, you know, uh, if you are in a business in downtown, you want to know where the people go, right? And for traffic, you need a better function. Yes. Then we needed to deviate from where and when people would go in a model. That was the remaining question. Yeah. Uh, and so the, and, so, and I mean, and I think this, this in a way is kind of worth digging into or or um expanding on or explaining more is is because i think it's so important and so so i wanted to have like a catchphrase in the podcast first where i say uh you know that you wrote a paper uh that i uh, that i did, was too lazy to read so maybe you could explain it to me um so i wanted i wanted to say that but but what what i want to start with with this paper and i think we should talk about time geo um which is this paper that you're kind of also moving towards and and one of the things that 
the, you know, like, so, so, so I'm going to take a long story to, to get to it, but, it, but it's just when we write grant proposals, for example, we have to make up these stories of what we're going to do in the future. But I always feel that the good ideas don't come from the grant proposal way of thinking. The good ideas come from other ideas. They come from other papers that exactly like you have the individual mobility patterns paper and then you think, um, you know, there's this aspect that we didn't quite capture or there's like a weird thing or it gave me an idea for this or whatever. So, so maybe when you talk about time geo, I, if I, if I make the podcast really cool, I'm going to put like the, I'm going to put, you know, like the reference here or something, but we'll put, at least we'll put it in the show notes, but, um, but what is, what kind of, what, what is the thing that led you to, led you to that paper? Yes. Time Geo is a very special paper. It was exactly eight years. It was published exactly eight years after the Understanding Mobility paper that we talked. Um, the paper appeared in 2008. In 2009, I got a faculty position as a transportation faculty at MIT as a direct result of this paper because the transportation faculty at MIT didn't care if I didn't do any uh, PhD or related to the formal education in transportation at all. Uh, they knew that analyzing the mobile phone data for transportation was the way to go. Um, then imagine I enter uh, a program, I think is a uh, highly ranked in the world in an area that is uh, very different. Imagine like yeah. the American Physical Society a meeting, the APS, the March meeting is huge. Transportation have the TRB meeting in, ja in January all the time in DC is that big, but very big. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about that. All my students needed to graduate on that. That is a very close community. A lot of money is involved on that. And yeah. we are like the artists, you know, I was doing my free function. You know, it's literally like the class you feel when you have between physicists and economists. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we I mean, drive I, I, them I, crazy, don't we? <laughs> like totally. Guys. I mean, I've been writing some papers in that it, like kind of overlapping with transportation and and I've, as always, also completely kind of unaware of anything and, and so on and, and, and kind of being like, holy shit, like there's a lot of people and they, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of tradition to understand and get into and so on. So, so yeah, I can imagine what it's like for that to be your kind of primary place, right? So it's, it's great to be at MIT, but it perhaps is scary to be Ooh, among. It was the... brutal. Uh, however, um, Pu Wang, a former student of Laszlo, came as a postdoc. A little bit later, uh, Christian Schneider, former student of Hans Hermann. Uh, Jameson Tool came from Nathan Eagle, so, which uh, they met in uh, Santa Fe Institute. It wa I was uh, put the challenge in front of me, but my team would not be diluted. So we no. would be physicists of complex system, no matter what. Yes. And then um, apply the scientific method. It doesn't fail, right? So it's okay. It, it is, I mean, I didn't do a PhD in transportation, but I had a PhD in physics and I had a team be, uh, with me. We would take the challenge. That's why Tangio came eight years later. Then after I explained to you this hard transition, it was not at all that we started Tangio and it took the <laughs> year. That would be funny. Well, it took the year in, in other ways because the first work, I mean, we did two things. I mentioned them, Pu Wang and uh, Christian Schneider. I asked, I asked one day one of senior colleagues and I asked, well, what do you need to believe the phone data? Because they wouldn't even call the users user, they call him phones. So, because phones do not act like people. Come yes. on, phone is you, you are with your phone anyway. But I noticed that they wouldn't believe because I have a, uh, 2 million users, I said, in Boston. Let's do a transportation model. You have 2 million phones. Okay, fine. 2 million phones carried by users. Uh, well, that person told me, you need to put them in the streets, the phones, you know, for traffic. Good. Then pull one, start working uh, a paper that we call understanding road usage. 
So we focus in the aggregated or the flows, but yes. in the streets, roads. Then whole, some statistic analysis of roads. And then Christian, um, brilliant Christian, uh, he starts seeing the trips and the business. But hang on, but so here you, now it's- It goes to the year because it's, it's a, the motif, the, the trial, the, the, what is the path, the daily pattern yeah, uh, of the visitations. And but then that is the, the, we call them network motifs. Of, but, of the, but the thing I want to kind of get at or understand, understand better is this idea of, um, is it still cell towers you're working with now or do you have like, ah, good GPS question. data? Good idea. Very good, very good question. Yes, that was other complications along the way. It, for us, it, you need to uh, abstract the situation and we have cell tower. And by the way, cell tower are nicely located and they resemble census tracts. Census yes. tracts have covered 5,000 people and it's pretty good to have the flows and the lows through census tracts. Yes. Um, the, the data we start working with, um, one was with cell towers in the Bay Area and the other um, in Boston were not cell towers then we needed to learn and we did that with some of my PhD students uh, to do the parsing trajectories we, we follow we started following computer science yes because uh, you needed to not take long lat as a location anymore like with the towers that was happy times yes. we needed to parse that but after you parse that you decide what is the resolution yeah and it's not antennas it's uh, now a cell of 400 by 400 so this the uh, resolution of the location depends on the data you have yes then when it's triangulated that's a very good question in fact we do uh, i think the first or second figure we show how the raw data look like it's a mess of course that took us time yeah i think ah that's the key thank you for asking because christian was working with data from an um, undisclosure European country, then he could continue doing the motifs with the antennas. Probably, if we wouldn't have the clean data, it wouldn't have been harder for him to go with the motif story. Yes. But because it was a European antenna uh, data set, no problem. He compared the daily visited locations and the little daily network with travel diaries. Yes. That was a, another important moment unbelievable similar so this is similar to the school <laughs> prl uh, project that you say this is ridiculous it's identical so if you yeah. do the combination of in how many ways you can visit four nodes it's a yeah. lot you know the number of ways you can combine four nodes directed graph there are many yes there are only few a few like three or four that people use in a unbelievable simple model that only takes preferential return and exploration yes we 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 recover the motifs on a day so yes. what we can reproduce with christian model is the number of visited locations on a day and the excuse me it's not even preferential return the, what we need there is a it's like excitement you know it's but, like um it's similar to the bursts daily dynamics, the bursty activity, uh, that you have waiting times that can be long or very short. Yes. Then but the I, very I mean, short but... uh, activities were visiting uh, exploration, new locations. Yes. But so, so I did, but, but I mean, but if we want to sort of say that the, the, the paper in a way continues to say like, what, what are the things that are driving uh, human mobility? And how can we model it? But in a way, the goal of this paper, as I understand it, um, I did look at it a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, not a lot, uh, but it's to build basically a model of a city, like how a city moves around, right? Like that's okay, the okay. Level. No, the, the thing is that the, the way Tangio goes, we, we, we are going through the memory line. So it's like a, we have the ranked locations that, that we have their paper we have we the have, phone data paper we that have some has distributions the, we want to we want to re reproduce or right right so, so they basically so that you know where we're going is 
San Gio, eight years later, have it all. Yes. That started with Dear Prater and bring yeah. us back to the travel demands of the city at individual level, like the transportation community wanted, because flows, <clears throat> aggregated flows are not as hard to reproduce as individual mobility yes. that is based on agent-based models that are uh, done with econometrics and utility functions. One uh, very well recognized that I remember, there are many, but one that I remember model is MATSIM. MATSIM yes. is an agent-based model also. It, it was born in the physics community no? by Kai Nagel, for example. So, but it was Kai Nagel, Santa Fe, or Los Alamos doing econometric. Yes. We come yes. from phone data, and uh, we wanted to do a model that would uh, have the daily mobility, every time step, the time step should be minutes, at certain uh, uh, spatial aggregations, not room to room, of course, nor building to building, but the uh, blocks, you can think yes. census blocks. That yeah. is the goal. And what we had is the, uh, the individual mobility paper and the dollar bill paper. And me, me because that's part of the story. I did San Gio because I was a transportation faculty. So I wanted to grow. Yes. So the challenge was how we use this for real. Yes. In the, trans in the APS of the transportation. That was, what I, that was my yes. goal. And it, it, um, I can tell you it was, uh, it was successful because the icing in the K more than the PNAF was a NCHRP report for the Transportation Academy that is on a human, human mobility with phone data endorsed by a company <clears throat> and the Transportation Academy, National Academy, it has a group of transportation. Yep. So basically, they did this report with a company and the researcher, that is my group, that phone data can be used. And they compare it with everything that is in the industry. That yes. came after Time Geo, almost yes. parallel, because there we put together all the papers we have for that report. But then, OK, Time Geo was the goal that we would have all the laws yes. of human mobility that could be validated. So the validation component mm -hmm. made the model not so elegant. After all, because you needed to take care of things that commuters, not commuters, um, yeah. the departure from work, this type of thing. But so now I'm beginning to understand it more. So it's good that we're, you know, like we're having Important. this conversation in a way because, you know, exactly like what we, what, what, when you're a physicist working on mobility data, right? And what the stuff that I've done in a way is to kind of say, we take this big data and then we say, let me tell you a cute story about this, right? Like, let me tell you, it's exactly like you say that it is creating a kind of art or something that's there only because it's nice to know about and it's some nice ideas. And so you had this mindset in the way that you were working and then they put you in this transportation world and they were like, we don't care about your beautiful ideas. We need to make sure the Metro it like has the right number of, uh, uh, you know, like whatever, going back and forth the right amount of times. And so you were kind of like, all right, I'll give you this, but I want to do it in my way. Is this like- a And fair? I need to try exactly that soon. You have summarized the reason that Tangio is as it is. That was the reason. And, and it's not the usual model and just the usual discovery. And it happened eight years. Then we yes. started one thing at a time. So that the, the motif was one discovery that yep. Christian did physicist style. Yep. Then yep. that's one piece that we recovered. Then on the other hand, we were doing this work led by uh, Filippo Simini. That is where they are going to go. Yep. So the motif tells you uh, just the time component when you decide to move. It says uh, you put errands quick then the, the time, the, the stay time in, in the different places is the motif paper. Then that, that controls when you move. But the, the other aspect is where you go. Yes. Then you have the locations you already know that you have visited. 
and you are going to explore. That came the Xiaomi some paper on now it comes. We introduce that. We not introduce. We keep that concept of human mobility. Yes. Uh, that Xiaomi and Laszlo discovered that this the exploration and preferential return, but that doesn't tell you where you go. It, it tells you you are going to explore, but where for the metro type of situation, you need yeah. to say where. Then um, Filippo was working um, in the radiation model. That the radiation model at the end, you can summarize it as a ranking <laughs> process. Yep. of where you are going to go. So it's, it's gravity style, but also is based on uh, the closest location that is most popular, mm -hmm. that is going to attract you. Yep. So you, you rank the things not by mass, number of people there, but by visits. It, yep. It's a way of uh, flow, aggregated flow, that at the end of the day, the places with more visits get more popular, ranking again. Yep. Uh, then we, we did that part to, to move the explorations. Then I think those are all the ingredients. When one ingredient that is not really ingredient is to run everything, you put the circadian rhythm. Yes. Which meaning is you are not going to depart randomly. It's just this yeah. aggregated function. And also some people um, depart more than others. So it's the weekly trips. So that aspect you need to, to get from the data too. So there is where we, it doesn't come so elegant, right? You're but sure, then we but have I... to put the circadian rhythm with this heterogeneity in the departures yeah. and the other ing ingredients of where to go when that have ex a exploration with preferential return. We have the components of the motif that is uh, just the burstiness um, and it has radiation. Yes. It's everything that we were, uh, that we knew as a community but that if we put together we needed to validate yes not to mention the fact that you need to clean the data that is figure one <laughs> okay by that the way sure. don't sure. Uh, that is a message for us to the physicists it's like, it was a happy moment where we have antennas now yes. we need to uh, define the location after you yeah. define the location let's do all together with the goal of having a model that reproduces the locations at every time step step of the day in a day yeah. average weekday yes for the transportation yeah. purposes the transport is have many applications that we have done after yes. yeah that summarizes the story that, i can tell you some very I, funny uh, there are a few I, gossips <laughs> of course but, about but, the, but i think the but we definitely need to do the gossip i think that's what everyone wants to know but but i also <laughs> But I also want to get at this thing that, I mean, I think that's so important that that when you study human beings and you actually need to do something, it is complicated. You do need to put a circadian rhythm on yeah. top of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And especially when you're competing with these crazy models. I mean, when I imagine like the existing transportation models, I kind of imagine that you literally, you know, like you take each person in the red, in like the whatever government registry of where everyone lives and you put them at their house. That's the data set. And then you go like, where do they work? And you choose like a supermarket and you have these real little robots moving around exactly. your agent based model, right? Yeah. And when you have to compete with that, exactly of, all that information, of course, you can't just have like a beautiful thing like it needs you do need exactly more, right? you got my point yes yes that's why when many years later you told you asked me something about time here i was glad because um i knew i was losing my physics audience despite i think the st i of course it's blind review i don't know who they are but sometimes according to the question you guess right yes you you guess the school, no, the community. <laughs> yeah, sure. I knew I was going to lose my 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 physicist community. However, I had some physicist reviewer that understood what you are telling me. Yes. That is, a, it had to be like that because that was the measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we had to 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 be with. I need to in here. I have to mention one community that we haven't given enough credit because we didn't use all that, but. There are interesting opportunities on combining the way of thinking. Notice that time geo is really not 
It has the non-elegant components because it had to be effective, but the core is physics uh, discoveries, right? Yeah. All of them. But I mean, I mean, I I think in a way, as I the more you know, like the older I get and the more I learn, the less arrogant about the physics approach I become in a way. I see that it's highly valuable and it gives a lot. And we've kind of been like, yeah, yeah, there's the transportation people doing all the boring stuff or whatever. But <laughs> I mean, and, and I think, but I think in a little bit, like, so, so we had a recent paper on mobility where we had a reviewer from transportation. And I also see, right, that the future somehow is that we figure out how to work together in a better way because it is also true that while elegant like we can't just like to get to the next like i think that there is a kind of a big leap you could take with the early stuff that you did with laszlo and these physics realizations that really add a lot to transportation but i think now that we're at this level of complexity we also need to kind of we need to all pool together right and then of course you know, is the deep learning just going to get there before us anyway? I guess, you know, like that's, that's something also for another, um, another conversation. That is so interesting because that opened that type of uh, intellectual questions. Two aspects, that is, in the next steps, we agree 100%, it has to be uh, effective enough. And then that know-how and need come from transportation. I, and is happening because we are talking now about this is to, we are already we passed 2018 so we are talking about two decades yes. then the decade that brought us to time geo was that you know it has to be effective it has to be passed by the two communities <laughs> it's like when you go to war <laughs> we were like a little uh, <laughs> beaten it's not elegant it's whatever we published it we made it yeah. then you get the time to breathe and realize some things and one of the aspects is that um, these two communities need to come together and what is more inspiring to me is that it's doing by the next generation you know professors that would be our generation of PhD students I can mention one a faculty in transportation that took the class of Pierre Brockman at Northwestern wow he's yes. a transportation PhD Max Mazzani is a very well-known advisor Hani Max Mazzani well, he took the class of Dirk too. He is a faculty in Australia, Saberi is his last name, Meat Saberi. He brings the flagship of doing absolute cool work in my perspective, because he has all the tools of transportation and likes very much the physics. I, he has come to NetSci. We have a paper together that does uh, SIR in traffic spreading. He's really nailing it. Yeah. Then when you told me you had a, in your paper, you had a um, referee from transportation, it's because it's happening. Yeah, the, yeah. the fact that the community, thanks to these students, this new generation that is speaking to the two worlds, yeah. then we are reading each other. Yes. I, I have a paper coming that is unifying the science of traffic physics and transportation. So we have a paper, there is a legacy, a Carlos Daganzo, and there is even Prigogini works in traffic and yeah. cabling. So yeah. we have one paper that unifies the science of traffic and it's physics and engineering. We, yeah. are not the, we, have, we are not talking about the computer science yet, right? No, no, no. But, but I mean, but it, it, when you talk traffic, so first I have to say, because I don't think I said it. So I just want to say, that reviewer helped make the paper a lot better, first of all, right? Wonderful. Because they point of out course. blind yes. spots and you're like, whoa, yes, and, and so on. So so that's I just needed to say it because otherwise I would that's be wonderful. Yes. It. But, but physics also comes into you know traffic from other places, right? Because there's also uh, granular flows which explain some of the phenomena exactly. that are observed and so on. So there is somehow something there that's always it's beautiful right. it's a nice system to work in traffic you know that there is a fundamental uh, law of the traffic flow that after a certain density your link your street filled up then you have flow <clears throat> more cars per time step until certain density your flows decrease 
Yes. Then it's up and down. It's yeah. called the fundamental uh, diagram of a link. That is a beautiful law. It can mm. be macroscopic too. That is number of cars living up. So basically your link congested, your zone congested. Yes. That so was a car that began to discovery. He's a transportation, a very well-known engineer here from Berkeley. And then I got a student from a student of Carlos, a, a grandkid of Carlos. And we are connecting this uh, congested macroscopic regions with percolation from Clover yes. Havlin that has been working on this. When you put the two fields together, voila, wonderful thing happened. So it has to continue. Yes, but hang on. So happening. you could see on my light now that like, it's getting dark here, the daylight is. is um... Yes, I see. I have like a little lamp somewhere, <laughs> make it a little bit better. Um, so, so we have to not go on too much longer, probably. But, but I want to hear. Yes. I feel like in this inaugural episode, we also need the gossip. So, what, what, what was the gossip? Yes, part? True. we have ten minutes for gossip. It's plenty of time because gossips are simpler. Um, let me see what when. Uh... Okay. There, there, there is a sad story. It can be a sad gossip, kind of sad. I know this is a funny thing, but a gossip is a gossip. I cannot. We'll take it. Let I'll me take tell it. you something because it's explained to you, please. Yes. It was so hard that uh, the PhD in charge, that now is the second author of the Tangio paper, yes, he decided not to graduate. He didn't graduate. He had plenty of content. <laughs> yes, he didn't have plenty of content for a PhD. But the same senior colleague that told, put the font in the street, he was right, was in his committee and, and he was uh, skeptical of the model and, and he's very famous. And, and the student got scared and tired, tired. Yes. He got a job in, here in the Silicon Valley. And he said, you know what? I don't need a PhD. MIT PhD, I don't care. I have the job. He didn't graduate. That's why we have a second offer that another author that contributed equally because she finished the thing for yeah. us, the figures and the stuff. That is a crazy part. Because of that, we know how to run time geo in the group. But then the gossip is, it took us forever that we were using the results, but yes. we were not running time geo. It was, <laughs> we don't have it clean soon. And you know that, right? We yes, yes. do not have it clean and we need to do it because we had kind of PTSD Yes. That, you know, it, it had to be in something like SK Mobility. My dream, I mean, I think you did you put something already in GitHub? I want to put all the time your steps. That is going to be one more model. Yes. But the yeah. truth is, it has some MATLAB pieces, some pieces here and there. We don't have it clean because the way it was done. Yes. Especially because the student, uh, he had for uh, health reasons, took a trip then found a job, then never come back. That, that's the reason. So it was health in the middle. Yes. It was really dramatic. <laughs> but I think After but submission, I, he took a leave of absence. But I think that raises another point, which is somehow, you know, something also important to talk about, which is that, you know, the Laszlo School of Science basically says, like, you write a paper and you don't hold anything back. Like to do something that's really, really good. That's also, I mean, we talked about all the work you put, put into the original individual mobility paper, right? And it is like, you give it everything you have. And if there's something you can make it better, then you make it better. And you keep doing that until there's nothing you can make better. Basically, that's the, mm. that's the method, right? And so number one, you know, like that's insane. And of course, you know, no, it's not for everyone <laughs> you know what i mean so i think also something <laughs> like time geo and this whole process like we talked about how great it is to do science but you have to somehow have this crazy drive and get something out of making it making things as good as they can mm. humanly possibly be it is a little bit insane like i love it personally i think it's like the closest thing we have to transcendence in this world is to make something that you can't make any better. And I feel like in a way, oh. that's what's great about science. Do you know what I mean? But I can yeah. also understand someone is like, what? 
why why would i why would i do this let me just get out of here and you know like make some money and go to the beach exactly that's a student right <laughs> but i get it i'm just but for me personally whatever is is so so and he had the feeling to to a scare against the, prof the the professor was the father of the econometric model choice model yes. then he was like exactly what you said at the beginning how can you compete with these little robots that you control everything so he was too scared that our crazy model of the physicist would yes. be too hard to compete or too yes. exhausting to make them compete with the other ones yes then in that process he got exhausted and and he's like oh, why this crazy guys the two the two are cool like, i'm i'm but out I of here feel maybe i mean maybe if if the world expert of what i was working on had come to me during my phd and said you know what this is uh this is not going to work i it would have made me worried too so so i mean it makes sense yes exactly exactly that that is like um in fact, because the, this person told me, don't do models, don't do models. That is offensive. How can I not do models? Why not? It's like, what? The, stay with your data. What, what is he talking about? Is it cleaning data? With, the kid doesn't understand. But um, yes, it, it, we got nervous, <laughs> both. Yes. But it, uh, However, it um, it's working. That's why, I mean, you read it. Some other, we did tons of paper out of it. Now it came a scale mobility. Uh, one thing didn't I didn't like from this transportation uh, community is that always somebody had the model that is the thing that the new students need to run and it takes forever. Yes. Then I, I want to reinvent myself. Instead of us recovering exact, you, we know the steps, we discuss them today, but now we want to do extra bin for the spatial uh, aggregation. For, so, so in long story short, now we got new data, everything in California, sunny California. Uh, we want to test the patterns again and use time view if we need it. At least if not, for certain cases, you do it simpler. Yeah. I don't want to repeat the, I want to learn the validation without having to go repeat the recipe. And that's what we're doing now. So we got, and now and we have three sources of data sets that is smartphones, well, two, in fact, smartphones and CDR, call detail records. So they are two scales. Depending on the scale, you can ask different things. And we're super interested in environmental and new technologies type of application, meaning electric cars, Yes. Climate change is a slow pandemic. I am not working so much in the in COVID-19 related thing, but very much in a climate. Meaning in this case, a mitigation, right? It's like a, how we mitigation and adaptation, how we adapt to the more frequent fires. Yes. How do we do to start uh, producing less CO2? If all of your users have a phone and you know their demand, and you tackle this type of question, maybe you can propose things. That, that's the new challenge I invent myself. Yes. And of course, traffic is because it's a, when the new beautiful loads come, traffic, I'm going to stay put in the spirit of uh, physics and engineering put together. Absolutely. And, and I mean, look, when the self driving cars come, it's going to make everything crazy again. And, and you, you know, like you can start over with, uh, <laughs> with the mobility. It would be beautiful to have more green spaces. You know, everywhere we go, by the way, another aspect that is not so much uh, felt in, in physics is um, when you're working in the transportation domain, it's binary. Yes. You take the selfish route or the social optimal right route. You take the transit and the bike or you want politically to drive your car. You want dense cities, you want sprawled cities. Then um, if we have the driving car, so basically when you're working in urban planning, you need to take a stance of what type of cities you want. Yeah. I want them green. I yes. want them biking. It's not easy in the US it's with the highways. And I know not, I support that, but we need the dialogue. Because as in every stream, you have the middle. There are people that this cannot bike, obviously. So, and I need to accept that as an urban planner. Not everybody mm -hmm. can take the bike. How we negotiate along the way to have cities that are better for our kids. Amazing. This yeah. is like the perfect point to end on, I think, right? How do we make cities that are amazing for our kids? That's what you're working on. It's so cool. I loved 
chatting. I thought it was me. You just froze after you said we had we want cities that are amazing for our kids. We had like <laughs> the best ending. We had the best ending and we blew it. But in the meantime, you can see that I fixed my I fixed my lighting. <laughs> it's a little bit better now. It's not perfect or anything, but it's better. So so let's call it let's call it a day. It's been amazing. I love the chat. It has been so great and it uh, was wonderful. This uh, this paper deserves this podcast because you have a lot of reasons and things to talk about behind it. Thank you, Sune. Wonderful. Thank you, Marta. I hope I hope that now, like the stop, like you just recorded it on Zoom. So I hope the recording worked. If it didn't, we'll just repeat everything. No uh, problem. It's uh, going to be in its own way. We, 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 we retrace the walk. Yes. All right. But thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Thank you so Amazing. much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.